Whenever something looks interesting or beautiful, there's a natural impulse to want to capture and preserve it, which means in this day and age that we're likely to reach for our phones and take a picture. Though this might seem like an ideal solution, there's a big problem associated with it. We're likely to be so busy taking the pictures, we forget to look at the world whose beauty and interests prompted us to take a photograph in the first place. These problems seem to be very much of today, a consequence of the tiny phones in our pockets. But they were noticed right at the beginning of the history of photography, when the average camera was the size of a grandfather clock. The first person to notice them was the English art critic John Ruskin. He was very impressed by cameras, at first, but gradually he grew very suspicious of them, believing that they blinded us to our surroundings. To try to correct this blindness, Ruskin recommended that all of us take up drawing, not with a view to becoming great artists, but simply because through the act of trying to recreate on paper what we see in the world, we study it in a way we never do when we simply take a photograph. Summing up what he had attempted to do in four years of teaching and writing manuals on drawing, Ruskin wrote, Let two persons go out for a walk, the one a good sketcher, the other having no taste of the kind. Let them go down a green lane. There will be a great difference in the scene as perceived by the two individuals. The one will see a lane and trees. He will perceive the trees to be green, though he will think nothing about it. He will see that the sun shines and that it has a cheerful effect. And that's all. But what will the sketcher see? His eye is accustomed to search into the cause of beauty and penetrate the minutest parts of loveliness. He looks up and observes how the showery and subdivided sunshine comes sprinkled down among the gleaming leaves overhead till the air is filled with an emerald light. He will see here and there a bough emerging from the veil of leaves. He will see the jewel brightness of the emerald moss and the variegated and fantastic lichens, white and blue, purple and red, all mellowed and mingled into a single garment of beauty. Then come the cavernous trunks and the twisted roots that grasp with their snake-like coils at the steep bank, whose turfy slope is inlaid with flowers of a thousand dyes. Is this not worth seeing? Yet if you are not a sketcher, you will pass along the green lane, and when you come home again, have nothing to say or to think about it, but that you went down such and such a lane.'